Let's bring in David Bonson, who's chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. David, it's great to see you. And just yesterday, our guest was saying the same thing. Look, this is an earnings and margin expansion driven rally. I mean, is that what you're seeing? Well, it is. And the problem is that it's required a lot of multiple expansion. And so you basically can't get a lot more multiple expansion unless you really exacerbate what becomes a bubble. And the earnings themselves, I think, are priced in realistically. I think we'll hit these earnings numbers, but I don't think we're going to beat them. If we do, it's very marginal. And there is a chance of revisions to the downside. So it's what we refer to as an asymmetrical risk reward. You essentially have the upside of earnings priced in, Kelly, and you don't have downside to earnings priced in. I see. So you and the other guests uh, would agree that it's all about earnings. I mean, it, it's, it's like stating the obvious, but they would say it's because earnings are going to continue to uh, grow or to come in strong. And you'd say not so sure about that. Is that because of a broader economic slowdown or you just think the valuations are too high? It's the latter. It's the, that if we're talking about 13 percent earnings growth next year after double digit earnings growth this year and you had a 25 times trailing multiple, a 21 or 22 times forward multiple, that's priced in. And people keep saying this about the top of the market. Oh, well, their earnings are growing so much. Well, I hope so. Since they're trading at 60 times earnings, that's why they're trading so high. So you don't get to have your cake and eat it, too. You can't say returns are going to be 15, 20 percent because earnings are good and the multiple is high because earnings are good. It's already priced in. So do you think it matters? You know, even though I I take your point on some level, whether the Fed cuts by 25 basis points at this point doesn't feel like it's going to move the needle for the whole economy. But we know it moves the needle for markets, right? I mean, it's when we just start to see tech stocks levitating and and all sorts of gyrations. I mean, do you think it's really a non-event what they do in the months to come? I think it's very obviously a non-event now. And let me explain the difference between the noise that happens in the market and what I'm saying. There's no question you get enhanced day-to-day volatility, but it resets. We right now have had zero rate cuts this year, as you know. We started off the year expecting six. Markets are up 15 percent. Markets have completely shaken off uh, a change in expectation from six cuts down to one or two, from 150 basis points down to 25 or 50. It's already shaken it off. Uh, The reason being the markets know the one thing that does actually matter, that they're done tightening and we're only talking about the when. When are they going to start a downward move? And your first rate cut is never your last. I pray to God they don't get back to the zero bound. There's no reason to have to do that. And even if and when we have another recession, I hope they've learned how hard it is to get off of the zero bound once you go there. But they're not going to just cut 25 or 50 over the next year or two. They're going to end up having to cut another 200 basis points because other countries are doing it and they can't let the dollar strengthen that much. And I want to mention the stocks you're looking at. You know, I don't want to call them ho-hum or humdrum (laughs) because they do have some nice yields. American Electric Power, Gilead, General Mills. But I I just with my last question, David, I want to quickly ask you about the political cycle. I mean, does anything in the months to come, whether it's around the Biden, um, you know, uh, convention, whether it's around the outcome of the election itself? I mean, can investors just look past all of this? Should they move to the sidelines? Are there opportunities or how are you thinking about it? On a daily basis, I talked to someone who told me how they got out of the market entirely because they thought Trump was going to do this or Obama was going to do that or Biden was going to do this. And they regret it because thousands of points have gone by. Nobody should try to get to the sideline in anticipation of something that, A, they have no idea what's going to happen, and B, um, they don't know what the market will respond to what does happen. When I tell people that the top performing sector under Joe Biden has been energy and that the worst performing sector under President Trump was energy, they can't believe what I'm saying. But my point is that I think Trump was a great president for energy, and I personally think President Biden has not been, but the markets respond to different things. Yeah. than who's living in the White House. That's a and great and point. so we, we have the Senate, the House, the uncertainty about the presidency. So there's a lot of variables between now and November that are really hard for investors to price in. And thereafter as well. David, great talking with you. Thanks right. for your time today. David Thanks, Bonson Kelly. with the Bonson Group.